after such an impassioned and correct speech by Vingus. Um, and, uh, um, but let me, let me come to that a little later when I speak about forced conversions. We have watched a film on forced conversions and we have spoken about forced conversions uh, in this session also. Um, but let me just, um, just for one small clarification, give you what all data available and the commission records each and every case and pursues most cases as much as humanly possible across Pakistan. And these uh, conversions, I'm, I'm glad that you pointed out that the issue of forced conversions in Punjab is as much worse as in Sin. And it is, I was telling uh, uh, a friend sitting next to me just a while ago, uh, that in places like uh, Nankana, for instance, you know, a young non-Muslim girl cannot even walk to a school even if it is in the same neighborhood. So these are things that happen across Pakistan, but um, in terms of, um, and I've got five minutes, so let me let me just sort of reword the the, the notes that I had made. Um, so there are three types of human rights crises that we face: uh, environmental, which is actually an existential crisis, and it is across the globe. But particularly in Pakistan, Pakistan is one of the ten most vulnerable states in which uh, you know there is a there's a major existential crisis and Sindh is uh, the most vulnerable within Pakistan and that is something that we need to understand uh, and uh, you know this climate crisis and its impact on livelihoods and habitats the examples are the erosion of delta I'm not going to repeat a lot of things because we have heard speeches when we have sort of um, uh, uh, fundamental historic issues have already been raised, uh, but it's also the if you if you look at the the floods last year, they were not floods from the upper riparian; they were actually cloud bursts, you know. And some friends who are more technically, uh, uh, which is their technical forte, they can correct me if I'm wrong. This was heavy rains and heavy changes in uh, the uh, weather patterns that we have observed over the years. And we were not prepared, and we are still not prepared. We are never prepared. Uh, after the earthquake, we are not. We were. We are not prepared for another earthquake. God forbid if it happens anywhere in the country. Uh, after floods, floods has been a part of our lives, whether rebellion floods or you know these cloud bursts. But we have not prepared for that. So there is no. There is no investment in people, uh, as it has been said that it is a security state and it is not a welfare state. Let's come to the shoes of federation later. Now, there's, there's another thing, the fisher folk, the fisher community in Sindh is very less talked about. Farmers and other professions that people uh, associated with, people are associated with, it is talked about the fisher folk are taking the brunt of it all, whether along the Indus or along the coast. Whether within the Indus and the other water bodies of Sindh and along the coast. So that is another another major issue due to climate crisis that we that we face. Um, now coming to the that was an environmental crisis, which is an existential crisis, but something that is not less important is the failure of Pakistan running as a federation. And we have spoken about it before. And Pakistan cannot survive as a state, and you cannot build a society. Um, I mean, if they wish to. 
in the first place at all. Uh, if uh, the fundamental issues of democracy, federalism, and equal citizenship are not adhered to, and we have not seen these principal values being adhered to uh, until now, and it is not a tenable situation anymore. And uh, we have heard uh, more sort of uh, the details of um, how things are uh, rolling out, playing out uh, in the previous session as well. We, so it is a lopsided federation which benefits the elites and state institutions. And uh, this is something that, that has been discussed. So I just want to uh, sort of re-emphasize and reiterate that. Thirdly, the violation of human rights that is more societal in nature, which you just spoken about. I mean, there is, of course, this, that society is possible because state has a cascading effect on society, and society determines how a community would look like, and the community would determine how a family behaves, and the family shapes the behavior of an individual. So there is a kind of, a, I mean, I'm putting it crudely, it's far more nuanced, but there is a kind of a flow chart, there is a cascading effect that you can see, so I agree with the, uh, my fellow speaker, that there is a desire to create a, a monolith. And the, the desire to create a monolith, the desire to create a homogenous uh, group of people uh, has been the desire from day one. And that desire hasn't, it will not work. But unfortunately, people who are pushing for, for that uh, you know, monolith to come about, it is not working to their own benefit either. So it is something that that, that needs to be stressed. Um, the, you know, when I say societal in nature, I mean the freedom of religion and belief, forced conversions, freedom of religion and belief is a major issue across South Asia now, unfortunately, but in Pakistan it has been around for a long time, and that is something that we have been campaigning for continuously for the last 37 years of our existence. Thank you. Finally, the you know the economic rights of people have to be, and I would urge my friends who, who live in the diaspora, particularly uh, the Sindhi diaspora that uh, you are a part of, we are a part of, um, to actually lobby for economic justice and economic rights of Sindhi people as much as you lobby for civil rights. Please do not create that divisibility and alienability between different forms of rights. So currently, half of the population lives below poverty line. And sometimes because civil and political rights are closer to us educated middle class people, so we, we tend to forget that economic and social rights are equally important. So why being a watchdog for human rights, uh, organizations like the WSD, we have to be a watchdog and it is a, you know, a source of great support, strength and inspiration for people who are defending human rights back home. Uh, it is also important for you to invest in education, in sin, particularly if you, if you are concerned with sin, uh, in education, in productivity, I mean in making our uh, young people, making our youth more advanced in terms of their um, uh, you know, their productivity, and when I say productivity, it's not just in capitalist terms, but also you, you see more cerebral and intellectual capacity, increasing investing in their intellectual and, and cerebral capacity. Lastly, it is important to learn from history, which we have been doing since morning, and uh, there are things which most of us agree upon, there are things which may have divergent views about, because we come from different perspectives, and I thank uh, the World Sindhi Congress for having people who have who may have different views also because that kind of dialogue helps find us contemporary solutions. Um, it is important. I mean, Dr. Shah Kamal is sitting here, so uh, with his permission, allow me to say that that it is important to learn from history, analyze it, understand what went wrong, and establish truth. Because the more so I completely understand that. However, however, um, I've been a part of such conferences, programs across Pakistan and different continents. There's this sort of a tendency 
at least people of my generation and older than me to get trapped into the past. And that has to be avoided. You just cannot have solutions that were proposed 40 years ago, 30 years ago to our age-old long-held problems. We need to sit together, rethink, as you were saying, sir. It has to be contemporary solutions. And these contemporary solutions have to be worked in harmony with similar rights movements. Uh, but rights movements also work at cross purposes, uh, and and I think that is that is something when you have the session on alliances and networks, you can frankly and candidly speak about. Thank you very much. Thank you.